Welcome to this lecture about the basics of principal component analysis, PCA. In this video, we'll start by looking at how we can combine variables so that we understand the fundamental basics behind PCA analysis. At the end of this video, we'll discuss how PCA can be used in biology to help to interpret multivariate data. It is common that we like to combine variables in order to simplify the analysis. For example, if we have measurements of body weight and height of some individuals, we can combine these two variables into one variable, the body mass index. The body mass index is calculated based on a person's body weight in kilograms divided by the square of their body height in meters. For example, let's say that we like to predict the cholesterol level based on a person's weight and height by using linear regression. However, remember that it could be problematic in linear regression if there is a too strong correlation between explanatory variables, which is called multicollinearity. Also, the more explanatory variables we have in our model, the more measurements we need to do. Thus, the sample size generally needs to be bigger for models including more explanatory variables. This is one of the reasons why it makes sense to combine weight and height into just one variable, the body mass index. We can then predict the cholesterol level with just one variable that contains information on both weight and height. Let's have a look at another example. In this case, we have measured the upper and lower blood pressure of six individuals. For example, person number one has a diastolic blood pressure of 78 and a systolic blood pressure of 126. Person number two has a diastolic blood pressure of 80 and a systolic blood pressure of 128 and so on. For this data set, there seems to be a strong positive correlation between the upper and lower blood pressure. If a person has a high systolic blood pressure, it is likely that the person also has a high diastolic blood pressure. Note that PCA will be more useful when the variables are strongly correlated, because the combined variable will then contain more information of the variables compared to if the variables show weak correlation to each other. Let's say that we like to combine the upper and lower blood pressure into just one variable that we simply call just blood pressure, BP. However, how do we combine these two variables in the best way? We could use the following equation to combine the two variables, where x1 and x2 represent the two variables that we like to combine. Let's rename x1 and x2 to our measured variables, the diastolic blood pressure, dBP, and the systolic blood pressure, SBP. We call the combined variable blood pressure. Alpha1 and alpha2 are called weights. In PCA, these weights are usually referred to as loadings. For example, if we set alpha1 to 0.8, and alpha 2 to 0 0.6. Then we put more weight on the diastolic blood pressure than on the systolic blood pressure. This means that the combined variable will be based on more information from the diastolic blood pressure. Let's say that we'd like to combine the two variables by calculating the mean of the measurements for each individual. For example, to calculate the combined blood pressure for person number one, we add the diastolic and systolic blood pressure and divide by two, since we have two variables in this case. 78 plus 126 divided by two is 102. Note that we can reformulate this equation to this, where we instead multiply by one half before we add the numbers. Instead of 1 over 2, we can multiply by 0 
Note that the form of this equation is identical to this one. Thus, when we combine the two variables by using the mean, this can be seen as we use the weight 0.5 for our linear combination. When we use this method, we put equal weights on the two variables when we combine them. We then continue to combine the values for person number 2 by using the same equation with the same weights. Then for person number 3 and so on. By using this method, we have combined the two variables into just one by using the mean of the two measurements. Another way to combine the variables is simply to sum the two measurements for each person. For example, 78 plus 126 is 204, 80 plus 128 is 208, and so forth. By using the sum, these values represent our combined variable. Note that when we sum the values, we also use the same basic formula as we use when we combine the variables based on the mean. The difference is that we here set the weights to 1 instead of 0 0.5. In conclusion, the two methods that we used so far use the same equation to combine the two variables. The difference between the two methods is just the values used for the weights. We'll now discuss principal component analysis. Principal component analysis, PCA, is a method to find a linear combination that accounts for as much variability as possible. In our example, PCA would combine the diastolic blood pressure and the systolic blood pressure in a way so that the combined variable has as much variability as possible. In other words, it will combine the two variables so that we maximize the variance of the combined variable. PCA therefore tries to find the optimal values for alpha 1 and alpha 2 that maximize the variance of the linear combination. Since one can make the variance larger by simply selecting larger values for the weights. The basic PCA therefore uses the following constraint, where the squared alpha values should sum up to 1. PCA also uses other types of constraints that we'll discuss in another video. In our example, we want to combine only two variables, which means that the square of alpha 1 plus the square of alpha 2 should be equal to 1. For example, if we set alpha 1 to 0 0.8 and alpha 2 to 0 0.6, we see that the sum of the squared values is equal to 1. Let's use these weights in order to combine the two variables. By using the linear combination of the two variables with the weight 0 0.8 and 0 0.6, the first person has a combined blood pressure of 138. The second person has a value of 140.8 and so forth. Next, we calculate the variance of this combined variable. We therefore first need to calculate the mean. Remember that the sample variance is calculated as the sum of the square difference between the individual values and the mean, divided by the sample size minus 1. In this case, we see that the variance of the combined variable is 12.74. Let's try many different ways for our linear combination to see which combination that results in the maximum variance of the combined variable. From our previous example, we know that if the weights are set to 0 0.8 and 0 0.6, the combined variable has a variance of 12.74. If we flip the values of the weights, 
so that we put more weight on the systolic blood pressure, the variance is reduced to 11.8. This indicates that we should put more weight on the diastolic blood pressure to maximize the variance. Let's put a lot of weight on the diastolic blood pressure with the weight 0.98 and 0.2. The sum of these squared weights is approximately equal to 1. By putting too much weight on the diastolic blood pressure, we reduce the variance of the combined variable to 10.4. Finally, we test to put a lot of weight on the systolic blood pressure instead. These weights result in the lowest variance of the combined variable out of all weights we have tried so far. According to our basic analysis, we would select the weights 0.8 and 0.6 when we combine the diastolic and systolic blood pressures because these weights generate maximal variance of the combined variable. These are the fundamental basics behind PCA. It finds the optimal values of the weights in order to maximize the variance of the combined variable. PCA puts different weights on the variables that are combined to maximize the variance. So, why is it so important to maximize the variance? Well, one can see the variance as information. Thus, when we combine variables, we like to keep as much information as possible in our combined variable. So how does PCA find the optimal weights? In the next lecture we'll look into the mathematical details. For now we keep things simple and explain the method very briefly. In our example the PCA would first compute the following covariance matrix. This covariance matrix has been computed on the following data. Then it will compute the two eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. The eigenvector with the largest eigenvalue holds the values of the weights, which in this case are minus 0.8 and minus 0.6. The values in the first eigenvector are then used as weights to combine the two variables. Although the weights are negative in this case, we will get the same variance as if they would have been positive as in our previous example. We'll now have a look at some examples where PCA is used to analyze biological data. PCA can be used to reduce the number of dimensions or variables in our data set for further types of analysis. We'll here see how we can reduce the following four variables into just two variables. In this example dataset, one has measured the diastolic and systolic blood pressure of six individuals, as well as their body weight in kilos and body height in centimeters. For example, we could use PCA to combine these four variables into two new variables. If the diastolic and systolic blood pressure show a strong correlation, we could combine them into just one variable that we call blood pressure. And if the weight and height show a strong correlation, we could combine them into a variable that we call body size. In later videos we'll see how we can perform this kind of combination. If we would use these variables to predict, for example, a cholesterol level with linear regression, we could use only two explanatory variables the blood pressure and the body size. We now have a look at another example. Let's say that we have measured many clinical variables on many individuals. Suppose we like to identify people that have a similar health profile, which means that they have about the same values of the clinical variables that have been measured. For example, is the health profile of person number one more similar to the health profile of person number two compared to person number three? When we have many variables, it is very difficult to manually identify persons with a similar health profile. If we combine all the variables into just two variables, 
that are called PC1 and PC2, it would be a lot easier to identify two individuals who have a similar health profile since we then only need to study two variables instead of many variables. When we combine the variables with PCA, we'll get these kinds of scores that are centered around zero, which explains why about half of the values are negative. If we combine all the variables into just two, we can see that these two persons have a similar health profile because they have similar principal component scores. Whereas these two persons also have a similar health profile, but different from person number one and two. If we plot these principal component scores in a two-dimensional plot like this, each point will represent the combined health profile of each individual. For example, this point might represent the scores of PC1 and PC2, which is the combined health profile for person number one. Whereas this point might represent the health profile for person number two. Since these two individuals are close in this plot, this suggests that these two individuals have a similar health profile relative to the other individuals. We have actually identified seven individuals that seem to have a distinct health profile compared to the other individuals. Suppose that PC1 is mainly associated with clinical variables associated to the health. Whereas PC2 is associated with variables that generally differ between men and women. Since these individuals have about the same values of the variables associated with the health, they would be considered as having a similar health profile. Whereas these individuals seem to have a different health profile. Since PC2 is associated with variables that differ between men and women, these points might therefore represent men, whereas these points might represent women. These four points might therefore represent four women with a similar health profile. In another video, we'll see how we can associate certain variables with a certain principal component. Another example where PCA is commonly used in biology is when we have measured the gene expression of all our genes by, for example, RNA-seq. In such case, we might have information on the gene expression of thousands of genes from a certain cell type extracted from each individual. For example, in this case we have information of the expression of thousands of genes for each of the six persons. For example, we see that gene number three is not expressed in none of the samples from the six individuals. Whereas gene number four is highly expressed. Since we have thousands of genes, it will be very difficult to identify two persons with a similar gene expression. In other words, it would be difficult to identify two persons with a similar gene expression profile. However, if we combine the expression of all genes into just two variables, PC1 and PC2, it will become a lot easier to identify persons with a similar gene expression profile. For example, we see that the principal component scores for person number one and two are similar which suggests that these two persons have a similar gene expression profile. If you plot these scores in a two-dimensional plot, it will become even easier to identify two individuals with similar scores. These four persons have similar scores for PC1, but they are separated if we study PC2 we can identify these pairs of individuals as having similar gene expression profiles. Similarly, we might have data from single-cell RNA-seq, where the gene expression of each extracted cell has been measured from just one person. For example, 
This row shows the expression of all the genes in cell number 1, whereas this row shows the expression of all the genes in cell number 2. This column shows the gene expression of gene number 4 for each cell. As can be seen, this gene is not expressed in the first six cells. The aim of these types of studies is usually to identify cells that have a similar gene expression as such cells might represent a unique cell type or cells that undergo a certain biological process. However, this kind of data set has thousands of columns and may have thousands of rows. To manually identify a group of cells that have a similar gene expression profile would be almost impossible. However, if we could reduce the number of columns to just two, it would be a lot easier to identify cells with a similar gene expression profile. For example, cell number 3 and 4 seem to have similar gene expressions since they have similar scores. If we plot these two principal components in a two-dimensional plot, it will be quite easy to identify cells with similar gene expressions. Each point in this plot represents the combined gene expression of a single cell. In this plot we have about 50 points, which represent 50 cells. Cells that can be found in a distinct cluster can be seen as cells having similar gene expressions across all the genes. With this kind of plot, it is possible to identify different cell types and cells that undergo a certain biological process. This was the end of this basic lecture about PCA. In the next lecture, we'll have a look at the math behind PCA.